evening art hostage here and we're gonna do another episode right i'm a bit late on parade today i've been having a chat to people around the world and that right right a power of mine good friend of mine's got two fake right in north america i'm not going to say where right but i suppose it hurts just the same whether it's in denver or los angeles right Anyway, he's got bad tooth, right? He's been to the dentist and he's got to go and have root canal or something, right? I don't know what I call that root canal. I don't know, what is it? Um, we call them fillings, don't we? Yeah, is that the same thing, putting a filling in or root canal? It may be an Americanism or something. Anyway, I've told him, right? And he can't have it done, right, till the weekend, right? Or even next month. I'm like, what, well, month? You're going to wait for all that toothache and that, right? I went, listen, go and get yourself, right, a little bottle of oil of cloves, Right, and you get a bit on your finger and you rub it on the tooth, right, and you won't believe it, right? The, the pain will just dissipate. It'll go away. It'll be like a miracle. But if you get some on your gum, it tastes really horrible, right? But oil of cloves is good. And then that reminds me. Do you remember that film in the 1970s, Marathon Man, right, with Dustin Hoffman and Sir Laurence Olivier, right? Um, Sir Laurence Olivier was the Nazi, right, who was living in Brazil and his brother who was living in New York, Right, was the custodian of the safety deposit boxes that were full of the um, tins of uh, diamonds, right? All six carats, thousands of them, right? Worth millions then, right? Hundreds of millions, billion dollars now. You remember in that film, right, that this Nazi that had fled to South America after the Second World War, he's come back because he wants his diamonds, right? And he don't know whether Dustin Hoffman, who is a marathon runner, right? He don't know, right, whether he's going to set him up when he goes to get his diamonds. And so he gets him, right, and they kidnap Dustin Hoffman, put him in the dentist chair, right, and, and then he goes to him, fuck me, it frightened the life out of me. He goes, is it safe? Right, and Dustin Hoffman's going, well, yeah, yeah, it is safe. Is it safe? No, 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 it's not safe. You've got to be very careful. Is it safe? Yes, yes, it's so safe, it's unbelievable, right? Is it safe? Lawrence Olivier goes, right? And he goes, no. He went, right, okay. He said, let's just check your teeth, right? So he gets out, he fucking rolls out all his dental implements, right? He starts going in the mouth when he's going, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, you ain't keeping a good thing there. He said, oh, he said, that hurt a little bit. He went, yeah, well, he said, don't worry about that. He said, let's have a little go. And he goes, fucking bang, and right up. And Duff Nostman goes, ah, screaming, right? He goes, no, don't worry. He said, that nerve is going to start to... Die now, right? He said, um, is it safe? When Dustin Hoffman's gone, I don't know whether it's safe or not. What are you talking about? Because he don't know nothing about the diamonds. But Lawrence Olivier, he can't take a chance, right? So he goes, right, that nerve's dying in that one. He went, we're going to go into a fresh one. And he gets out the fucking drill, right? And zzz, you can hear it, right? And all of a sudden, right, the front two teeth, right, he's going to go straight in there, right? And all of a sudden, it, it fades out because like, they couldn't even show it like that graphic. But you hear it, zzz, right into the fucking tube, and he's screaming and all that game, right? Fucking up. Can you imagine, right? And and at the end, he, um, Lawrence Olivier says he knows nothing, right? Because he would have said, well, I can assure you, right, if that had been me dusting off me, right, I'd have confessed on the fucking weight of the dentist chair. Don't worry about being in there, you know what I mean? Anyway, I thought I'd just share that with you, just an opening little salvo, right? So my old pal, right, who's got a bad tooth, right, when he gets the um, oil of clothes, he's going to rub it on, right, and it's going to he's going to go, oh, my God. It's like hitting an home run, right, at Wrigley Field. I think that's the longest home run in the baseball, right, uh, at Wrigley Field in Chicago, right, or it's like he's got a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Right, anyway, today's story, right. Now, this is a story, right, that, that um, encompasses Brighton, New York, right, Bali, right, and all kinds of other places, right, now we, we're going to have to start in the 1970s, right, because this is when it starts, right, in Brighton, in the UK, right, right, there's this, there's this young lad, right, he's a few years older than me, his name's Mark Baker, right, and, they, right, and he calls himself what they call him, Mad Mark Baker, right, and skateboarding had just come in, right, now this kid, this kid Mark Baker, right, he spent like all these days, nights, on the skateboard, right, he was like mustard. He was so hot, right, I'll tell you what, he was so hot, Red Adair couldn't put him out, right, he was he was the governor, the absolute governor, 
right? Um, and he'd be up Churchill Square, which is like his shopping mall, and he'd go all the things, right? And then down West Street, turn right up to the car park, round the back there, right? They got this sheer wall, right? And Mark Baker used to go up and down on this thing. I tried it a couple of times, kept falling off, right? I kept having to go on the skateboard, right? But I was out on the knocker, right? Trying to buy antiques, right? And earn money, right? Um, and I had to go with the skateboard and all that. Um, but I kept falling off and hurting my knee and all that and scraping my shin and all that. And I went, fuck that, right? And Mark, he used to laugh, right? Fucking hard as nails, a kid, right? Anyway, so Mark Baker, a couple of years older than me, late 70s, right? He gets... Um, noticed by top people in London, right? And then he goes up to America, right? To the United States of America, late 70s, right? And then he goes on a tour all across America, right? And he's um, he's regarded as the number two in the world, like the number one Elvis, I think his name was, or whatever it was, Mark, I know you tell me the name. Anyway, there was a number one in the world skateboarder, right? And then the number two was Mark Baker, Mad Mark Baker, so they go all over America and all that game, right? And then I'll go out on the knocker, right? Trying to buy antiques. So we get into the 80s, right? 84, right? Mark Baker, right? He then wants to move to New York permanent, right? So he moves to New York permanent and he gets a job, right? Collecting debts, right? With his mate Avi and all that, right? So he does that and he does all kinds of other things, right? But then, right, he, um, he starts to move into the nightclubs, you know? Uh, right, oh, he wants to open a nightclub, right? He's got this um, larger-than-life personality, right? Mad Mark Baker, everyone loves him and all that. I think they still love him now, right? He's in Bali, right? He's the wolf man, right? I'll get on to that later. Fucking won't believe that one, right? He lives with a pack of wolves, right? I can't believe it, right? It's true. You only got to go online. You see him, right? Anyway, everyone loves Mark and all that, right? But he's got a dark side, Right, a bit like Darth Vader or, or whatever, right? But anyway, Mark, right? So this is 84, right? So his first venture into the nightclub scene, right? He hires, right, a US aircraft carrier, right? That's um, defunct, right? It's, it's not, in, not in commission, right? It's in New York Harbor. So he hires, right, the deck, the flight deck, right? And he's going to have a fucking, um, um, a fe you know, a, a party there, right? So he anyway gets, sells the tickets and all that. And it goes fucking beautiful, right? So he uses that bit of scratch, right, a bit of readies, to put down, right, on a lease on a, on a nightclub. And then he starts the nightclub and all the things go, right? And then it becomes a popular little place, right? It weren't Studio 54, but he was earning a few, bub, right? And he got a few people in there, right? And um, the few of the stars would go in there, right, and the rope line and all that. And then that one for a few years, and then another one he opened, and then moved into the nineties, he's opened another one, then closed it down. Now, as you can imagine, right, you know, do you remember the film Carlito's Way, right? Yeah, with Al Pacino, right? He's had his ups and downs and all that, Mark, right? He's obviously putting loads of that Colombian marching powder up his bugle, right, and gets a bit of an habit, right, a bit of a habit, a, you know, cocaine habit. Um, then manages to kick it, right? And then he gets all fit, right? And then another nightclub, and then it's up, down, up, down. But we're talking lumps of dough, right? He organises a party, right? One night, right, he gets $500,000, all bona fide and straight, right, um, just from the night. And I'm going back 20, 30 years ago, right? So he's got bundles, right? He's in New York. Now, in the meantime, right, when he has all that craziness with all the coke and the pop stars and the models and all this game, right, politicians and all that, at the nightclub, right, he's getaway, right, he goes to Bali, right, which is the island, Indonesia and all that, right, beautiful, isn't it, yeah, right, all the jungle and all that stuff, right, and that's his little Shangri-La, right, where he's been going for 30 years to recharge his batteries, right, and then he goes back to New York and all this, right. So that's what he was doing, right? Now, let's fast forward, right, to 2012. Now, I ain't spoke to Mark Baker in, right, decades, right, decades. When I was a kid, I knew him. I knew him quite well. I used to, I used to make him laugh, right, and he'd laugh at me, right, because I kept falling off the fucking skateboard, right, and um, grazing my knee and all that game, right? And, he, and, and, I, and he'd say to me, he said, Paul, you're better off on the knocker. I went, yeah, I well, 300 quid a day, right? This is 1978. Anyway, boom. So this is 2012. Now, over the years, you know I've been involved in the art crime world and all that, first as a knocker boy, then as an organiser of theft from country houses and mansions, and then as a handler, 
right? And then I, and, and then I'm, when I became very successful, you become popular, and then I become an informant. And then I gave it all up, as you know, and I went to university, BA honours degree, master's degree, and I've become a social commentator, and I've been involved with intelligence gathering and art crime all around the world, right? Even though I fell out with the UK police and all that carry on, because they're a load of fucking dumbos. Well, it's not their fault. Intelligence-led policing in the 90s, right, was cost-effective and, it, um, and you know, it was so successful, right? But I sometimes think they don't want to be successful. But anyway, right, and so I got to know all the art cops around the world. Well, they got to know me, right, you know, um, you know, you know, they know me, right, and we know each other. So anyway, there's, a, there's the art cop, right, in New York City, right? His name is a man called Mark Fishstein. F-I-S-H, right, S-T-E-I-N, right, Fishstein, right, Mark Fishstein. Now, he's one of these art cops, right, he works for the New York Police Department, and he, he worked there for about 30 years, right, he went through all the homicide and all that, right, but he then established a little niche, he was the go-to guy, the art cop in New York, so now, in 2012, right, I'm having a word with Mark Fishstein, right, and he's Paul, he's Turbo. He went, Turbo, listen. He said, do you know anyone in New York, he said, who might be out to help me with regards art crime um, in New York? He said, you know, might have their pulse, uh, their finger on the pulse of the um, the art world, the so-called art mafia and all that. I said, well, I said, I know a few of the um, gallery owners in um, New York. I said, I've met them over the years now. I said, but they won't crack a note to you. I mean, you, you know how close shop it is with them. He went, yeah, he said, he said, I can never find out anything. He went, he said, literally, it's tight as a drum. He said, no one will say anything at all. I said, right, I'll tell you what you've got to do, right? I said, I know a kid, right? I know a guy, right, back from the 70s. I went, Mark Baker. I said, now, Mark has got a, a new nightclub in New York, right? I said, if you go down and have a chat to him, right? I said, I'm sure he knows about the, um, um, uh, the art world in um, uh, New York, right? I said, and I'm sure he'll, um, you know, He'll enlighten you, you know, he'll tell you stuff and all that, or he'll just give you a little basic general idea. He went, okay, he said, thanks, Turbo, right. So Mark Fishstein, right, New York Police Department's official art cop, right, he goes down to see Mark Baker. So he meets Mark, right, and he sits down, he has a chat to him, right, and Mark says to him, right, he says to Mark, he says, do you, he says, do you know anything about the art crime world in New York? He said that you could perhaps tell me, he said, or, or maybe you could explain it to me. So Mark went, well, he said, I don't really get involved in the art. He, he said, I do like a bit of art. He said, but as you know, I'm nightclubs and all that game, right? Um, he said, but, he said, I've got a little story to tell you. He said, no, I don't know if you'll be interested. He said, I've got a friend. He said, his name is Heli Narmed, right? Now, his father is David Narmed, right? And his brother, right, was Ezra Narmed, right? Now, the Narmed family... Right, they started out in Syria, right, and it all got a bit fucking out of hand in the in the seventies, right, and they moved to Milan, right. Now, when they were in Milan, right, this is Heli Nami's dad, right, David and his brother Ezra, right. When they were living in Milan, right, they discovered they could buy paintings in Paris and double or treble their money in Milan. So they started doing that through the seventies, right, and earned a fortune. So then they moved from Milan, right, and Ezra moved to Paris, and David moved to New York, and he opened up the gallery, one of the biggest galleries in the world, right, the Narmid Collection, right, fucking hell, right, they've got artworks in the Swiss Freeport and Freeports around the world and all that, right, Picasso, right, they've got 900, right, 900 Picassos, right, and Heli, right, if you go, right, say to him, Heli, you've got 900 Picassos, right? How cool is he, right? He says, yeah, but only 300 of them are oil on oil on canvases. You know what I mean? Only 300, right? The rest are obviously uh, ceramics and drawings and all that. Fucking free, 900 Picassos, 300 are oils, right? Now, there was a bit of, a little bit of argy-bargy in the Mogdiliani, right? And I'll go into that another time, maybe. It was bought legit by the Narmid Gallery at auction Sotheby's for six million dollars. Then it was discovered, right, that it was Nazi looted art, right? And the heir who was trying to recover it, right, tried to get it back off the Narmid family. Then they denied it because it's owned owned by an offshore company. Fucking, you know all that stuff they do up at that, that part of society, you know, with um 
shell companies and all this carry on, right? And 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 I think they would have had a deal with Ahmed. They would have said, well, give us our money back that we've paid, you know, or the auction house will, and you can have it, right? But I don't think he was having it, the geezer, or his lawyers, right? The ambulance chasers, right? And so anyway, right, it never got resolved, right? And I think the Mogdaliani, right, is sitting in a Swiss freeport, right, owned by Bouvier. Now, he's another geezer I go into another time when he ripped off the Russian, right, for $2 billion. He sold him out, made him pay $2 billion, and it, it, it was probably worth about 300, 400 millions worth at the time. Anyway, right, back to the Ahmed family, right? Now, they're billionaires, multi, right? They got four, five, ten billion dollars, right, between them, right? So they're in New York and they're, right, top of the society, right, top of the trees, right? They're still regarded as outsiders, right? I think it's the Jewish things here again, you know what I mean? Like the Rothschilds and all that, right? They do well and all that, but they're only allowed to a certain level and then all of a sudden people always look down their nose at them, right? It's a funny thing that is, right? I mean, I've had it all my life, right? Anyway, boom. So the Ahmed family, right? So Mark Baker is sitting down with Mark Fishstein, the art cop in New York, right? And he says, well, I've got a story to tell you. He said, my friend, Heli Nahmed, right? The son of the billionaire, David Nahmed, right? The art dealer. He's got, right, this gambling ring, right? This poker ring, right? And where they gamble, right? That's all illegal, right? But it's all top wealthy people, right? Um... In, to in New York society, where they go to this, um, that they go down, they have a game of cards, poker, and all that, and it's in Trump Tower, right? Now, Heli Narmid, the son of David Narmid, right? He's not only bought a an apartment in Trump Tower, he's bought the old floor. Right? I'm not kidding, right? You can go and check, right? Instead of buying one apartment, he's bought the whole fucking floor, right? The Narmid floor. Right, and he owns other ones in there, right? So anyway, he's got the whole floor, and I think he had it all converted into one apartment, right? Fuck me, it must have been massive, right? Full of art and all that, obviously, because he's gone, Dad, can I have another picture to snip on the wall, right? What's David? Right, now, David um, 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 Narmed, right? Apparently, the rumour is, right, if David Narmed starts shouting, right, it's so loud they can hear him on Neptune, Right, fuck me, right, and, and he's very animated, right, call oh, blimey, right, anyway, so Heli Narmid, right, he's now running this gambling ring, right, out of his Trump Tower apartment, which is the whole floor, and other locations and all that, and then there's some Russian guys coming in, and there's Russian money and all that, I'm only interested, I don't want to go into all that, right, but it's, and it's an organised crime thing, but it's like a, a business where, um, you know, like really rich people, right? You have to be really wealthy, right? Multi-millionaires, they go there, they play the thing, right? Like you sit on the Sopranos and all that. And then if you can't pay the bill, or if you run up a big bill, right, they might get a little bit heavy, right? I don't think it's so much to do like the Sopranos anyway, but I can't guarantee that. Right, so Mark Baker tells Mark Fishstein about this gambling ring, right, that Heli Narmid, right, is running, now, Mark Baker said, because Heli Narmid's his friend, he's let him have a little gamble, right? And unfortunately, Mark Baker's run up quite a big gambling debt, right, to Heli Narmid and his partners, right, in this gambling ring. So Mark Baker says, listen, um, uh, Mark Fishstein, right? He said, listen, if I help you, right, he said, and, um, and you can make the case, he said, can I, can you make sure that my gambling debt with them is paid off? Right, and I, you know, because then that, that frees me up, right? He went, yeah, all right. So Mark Fishstein went, okay, sign here, right? I don't know what the thing is the NYPD use. Is it a 302 or a 202? Right, it's a form, an informant's form. Anyway, so Mark Baker gets signed up by Mark Fishstein, NYPD art cop. Right, so Mark goes off, right? And now Mark Baker starts telling him a bit about... Um, Heli Narmid, right, and he's saying he's bought this painting and all this, right, and he's talking to him and here's his phone number, right, then Mark Fishstein thinks this is a bit of a big case, right, and he might be a bit bigger than what um, he can handle, so he calls in the FBI, right, so the FBI come in, right, and then they have a meeting, right, with uh, Mark Fishstein, and they say, fuck me, this is a big Great big um, gambling ring, right? You've got Russians, you've got dodgy art, you've got laundering money and all that game, right? Yeah, this is lovely. And who's your confidential informant, right? Um, Your CI, right? He went, Mark Baker, mad Mark Baker, nightclub owner. He went, right. So the FBI go down and they start bugging, right, the tables and places in the VIP lounge, right, where in Mark Baker's club. 
right? And other places, they've got all the cell phone numbers that Mark Baker's provided. They've got all the um, details, right? They're bugging um, Trump Tower, wherever it is, right? And they're bugging the Narmid Gallery. Fuck me, there's more bugs there, right, than there is down in the Amazon, right? So they bugged it all up, right? So this is 2012. We move through, right, to about April, right, March, April, right, 2013, and bang, right, all of a sudden, right, I'll read the headlines, right? It was all over the world, right? All over the big New York Times and everything, right? FBI raid, right, um, gambling ring, and they arrested 34 people, including Heli Narmid, they raid the Narmid Gallery, they arrest these Russians and other people and all that. It's about 34 of them, and apparently it's a $100 million a year gambling ring, right, that Heli Narmid's running, right? Well, now, all of a sudden, right, I don't have a guy at Heli, right, but listen, right, Heli's father's got 4 or $5 billion, right? Heli gets fucking anything he wants, right? Okay, he says, I want a Picasso, and so, you know, his dad would say, do you want two? You know, he's like Arthur. Do you remember the film Arthur with um, Dudley Moore, right, from uh, um, early 80s, right, where he'd drive around and all that game, right? But this is Heli Narmid, right? His dad's a fucking multi-billionaire, right, David, right, works hard. And there's a photograph they've got, right, Heli, at the Narmid Gallery where David, the father, standing there. He's got Heli and his other brother standing behind. And David Narmid has got the, the greatest suit I've ever seen. It's a pinstripe, right? It's, it looks, it's the greatest suit I've ever seen. David Narmid, right? He's best dressed man um, in the art world, right? Anyway, right? So Heli Narmid, right? He's got access to billions. He can do whatever he likes, right? Now, he starts up this gambling ring, right? I suppose because he likes a bit of a gamble, right? And maybe he does it just to sort of get, get his rocks off. He don't need the money. So anyway, right? The FBI come in. Right, and they launch this operation, and then boom, in the April, or the, or the March, or the April 2013, right, oh, it's all over the headlines, right, so they're all arrested, right, and the big, the most famous one is Heli Narmid, right, the son of David Narmid, right, the multi-billionaire, so anyway, it's all in the headlines, right, now Mark Baker, right, he's fucking freaking, right, now apparently what happened was that the FBI, when they got involved, they gave the lump of dough, to Mark Baker, I don't know how much it was, and he paid Heli off, right? So he's all paid. So Mark don't know, Mark Baker don't know Heli now made any money, right? Well, it's all come on top, right, with, with this great big raid. So Mark Baker, right, he's like, fuck this shit. He wants to get out of Dodge, right? So he's on the plane over to Bali, Right, and that's where he's been ever since, right? He now lives in Bali, right? But he fucked off, right, when the Heli Narmid thing, right, when it all came on top. Right, now Heli Narmid didn't know that Mark Baker was the original confidential informant, right? Never did, right, to this day, well, or to a few weeks ago. Anyway, right, so Mark Baker's now in Bali, right, and he starts opening up all these places where you drink orange juice and all that, the fresh stuff and all that healthy lifestyle, Right, but on the side, right, he's um, now starting to attract money coming in from Russia and, and other places. And now, right, with the Russia-Ukraine thing, right, there's fucking millions. He's pouring into, right, into Bali. And Mark Baker is setting up all these big deals and all these big developments. The Bali government fucking love it, don't they? I mean, they're getting hundreds of millions, billions of dollars being poured into Bali as we speak. Right, and Mark Baker's organising all that. And on the other side, right, he's... With the drug, um, with the global drug industry, right? Mark Baker was also friends, right, with um, Joey Sanson, right, um, and the Sanson family from Brighton. Now, Joey Sanson, right, I'll go into him, I'll do a podcast on him, right? He went off to Australia and then he grasped up some really big gangster, right? He got a like, quarter of a million dollars, right? But he's been involved in drug dealing, like, for donkey's years, decades, right? So then they're, they're, Mark Baker's in Bali, right, and they're having a little deal and there's a bit of dough coming up. And there's another kid, right, from Brighton called Julian Ponder, right? You've only got to fucking um, Google him, right? Julian Ponder, P-O-N-D-E-R, right? He's got an interesting story, right? His father was a journalist, right? And he leaked the details, right, of the budget when the Chancellor was going to give it, right? And he wouldn't tell the judge who his source was and he, got in, he was jailed for contempt of court. And it was big in the 60s, right? Julian Ponder's dad, his father, right? Um, he got he got jailed because he wouldn't name his source, 
right? And anyway, Julian turned out, he was, you know, he's turned out not as journalist, right? He's turned out as an international drug dealer, right? Anyway, he's still on his toes in Malaysia, right? But he got captured in Bali, right, with two kilos of cocaine. Because in Bali, right, cocaine's about 500 to to $1,000 a gram, right? And you're going to go, what, what? No, it is. Yeah, right. It's really rare, right? It costs between $500 and $1,000 a gram for cocaine, right, in Bali, right? Because they don't fucking reckon none of that shit, right? And they don't reckon, and it's very, you know, and there's all that death penalty, although a lot of them are corrupting that out there and all that game, right? So that's Julian Ponder. He gets captured, right? Well, uh, uh, he gets an old bird um, to, to fly him from Thailand with the cocaine. She gets captured. She's on a death sentence, right? He gets away with six years in jail. Now, during when he's in jail, he gets heroin habit, right? And, you know, you know like Midnight Express, um, the British attache and all that. He starts having an affair with her and all that. Anyway, he gets released and he fucks off, right? Boom. Mark Baker is now ensconced in Bali, right? And so he's having these little little powwows, right, with Joey Sants and Julian Ponder and and all those people, right? So that's one side of his life. The other side is getting money to be invested. And then the other side still lies over in New York, right, with all the friends and all that he had there, right? And he's getting a bit homesick for New York, although he come from Brighton. So he slips back to New York all quietly, right, as a little thing right there, right? And there's no, you know, and there's no sort of like it's on top for him, right? The people know that he's grassed up um, Heli Namid. And then he goes back, right? And then Heli Namid, what he did, does in the end of 2013, he has a plea deal, right, where he has to go to jail, right? He gets eight months in jail, right, which weren't long, or a year, right? And he has to pay back something like millions of dollars, $10 million, $20 million, which to him is like dropping a tip at a restaurant, right? So anyway, pays it back, right? You can imagine the old man, David Namid, I bet he fucking went potty, right, when Ellie's got involved in all this. Right, yeah, don't worry about that. They definitely heard him on Neptune, right? David Narmid, right? When he heard, fucking, I, I bet he read him the right act, you know what I mean? Going, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? I've got six billion, isn't that fucking enough? Do you know what I mean? You want to bet on the Super Bowl? Go and have a fucking bet on it, right? You, you and your gambling ring. Who do you think you are? Right, and I bet, you know, I bet he clipped him round the ear and kicked him up the arse, right? Anyway, Helly pleads guilty, right, to certain charges, plea deal. Goes and does his little bit of time, right? He does his porridge, right? He does his little bit of time. He comes out and he's a new man and all this game, right? And they're trying to rehabilitate him. And they've done all right. And, and, and it's and it's okay. This is in 2015, 16. So now we fast forward now, right? Now, all of a sudden, right? Two or three months ago, right? Mark Baker, right? He's in, he's in Bali, right? Now, he's developing nightclubs and these outdoor places, you know, trip on a boat and all that game, right? N never want to let the grass grow between his feet, Mark Baker, right? You know, and have a nice healthy breakfast, the yams and all that game, right? And the juice, right? He then starts, right, looking after, right? A wolf, right? Wolf, no, a real one, right? Not fucking moody, right? A real one. Real wolf with a piercing blue eyes, right? Unreal, right? A real wolf, right? So he looks after one, he gets another one, and they mate, right? And then they have, like, eight puppies. So now, right, Mark Baker lives with ten wolves on Barley. You can go online, find him, the wolf man of Barley. Fucking wolf man of Barley. Right, next thing I'm, I'm right, I'm wondering whether he's going to teach the wolves, right, skateboarding, right, because then we'll see fucking ten wolves, right, coming down the road with Mark Baker all on skateboards, right, and, and I know, fucking, can you imagine, picture, right, and on another thing, right, he drives a scooter, right, and there's one wolf sits between his legs and another wolf fucking sits on top, right, so he's driving a scooter with two wolves, right, God, he's a rugged geezer, do you know what I mean, he should have been in the special forces, I think, right, and I think three, um, 60th birthday, he goes to a cliff in Bali, right? And he says, I'm going to jump off into the water. I promise, I'm telling him into the water. I'm telling you. And he's got a video, right, or a photo of him jumping off this fucking cliff, right? Into the, he's 60, right? Into market, right? Anyway, goes up into the mountains, right? With the fucking um, wolves and all that game, right? So now Mark, right, he's not certain, but he thinks Heli Namid, right, might have heard that he was the CI, the confidential informant, right, on the trouble back in 2013, right? So now what I'll do, right, I'll say, Mark, listen, right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach out to Heli Namid, right, and I'm going to fucking try and smooth it out here, you know, blessed be the peacemaker and all that. 
So I reach out to Henny, right? Henny, listen. Oh, and another thing, right? Yeah, Henny, right? When he comes out of jail in 2016 or where it is, right? So he served his sentence. He's done his time, right? President Trump, right? When he's in office, on his way out the door, right? Okay, on January the 20th, right? Inauguration day, right? For President Biden. He signs, right? A... Um, what do they call them? A pardon, official pardon. You know, not presidents. On their last day, they sign pardons. Bill Clinton, um, pardon Mark Rich, you know, and there's a long list, right? They do, right? Anyway, on the list of President Trump, he pardons Heli Ahmed, right? So it's all over. He gets a fucking presidential pardon, right, for running this gambling ring, right, of 100 million that Mark Baker had grasped him up on, right, informed on him with Mark Fishstein, the New York NYPD cop. So now, Heli Ahmed's got the experience out of the way. He's got an official presidential pardon, right? He can wipe the slate clean and start again. So I'll say to Ellie, right, listen, Ellie, you've got a presidential pardon, right? And it's all behind you. How about you giving one of the Ahmed family official pardons, right, to Mark Baker, right? He was into you for a bit of dough and he was still doing a little bit of that Colombian marching powder up his bugle, right? And he was getting a little, you know, he was down on his luck and it was all shit and it all came on top, right? Okay, he stuck you in, but he's cleaned his act up now. He lives in Bali, right? I said, how about you giving him a pardon, right? But I'm still waiting for the reply, right? Now, I'm hoping that Ellie Nahmed, right, if you listen to this, right, listen, Heli, right, look, all right, I know it's naughty what he did, right? But Mark understands that, right? And he's not a bad bloke, right? I know he's involved with all that drug dealing, right? And I fucking, you know what I mean? I keep saying to him, you know, try and stay on the good side. You don't need to get involved in all that. Right, that's another thing I go into, right? So, Heli, listen. Right, have a word with your dad, David. He'll put you right, especially if he's wearing that lovely, beautiful suit that he's got on, right? Just, like, go to him, okay, I'll accept that. Right, you know, you betrayed me. But, uh, you know, he got you, you got a pardon from President Trump. Well, give a pardon to Mark Baker, Right, so that's, right, you got that, Ellie, right, here we go, right, so that's that sorted, right, blessed be the peacemakers, or as they said in Monty Python, blessed be the cheesemakers. Right, so now we move on, right, now Mark Baker, now he's ensconced in Bali, right, it's beautiful, everyone loves him, right, life and soul of the party, he's not, not an absolute gentleman, right, he's got all them lovely white teeth, right, they're not his, right, he ain't borrowed them, right, but, but he's had them fitted, right, all the Hollywood one, right, Look, it looks like the Bee Gees, right, must have cost him a fortune, right? Anyway, so he's over there, right? And he's now, he's over 60, right? Right, but he's strong as an ox, fit as a fiddle, right? He's been surrounded by wolves and all that, right? He lives with. Right, well now, in the global drug game, right? There's all kinds of whispers and all that, right? Because apparently there's a big group, right? And I'm not revealing anything here. You can go on fucking Google and read all about it. There's apparently one big cartel, right? Working from Dubai, right? Daniel Kinahan, right? And Raphael Imperiali. Now, my only connection knowing about them, right, is Raphael Imperiali is the Italian um, godfather, right, who bought the st two stolen Van Goghs that Octave Durham stole when he stashed them in his, uh, in his family's um, villa, right, or um, villa or farmhouse in Italy. And then when he got com convicted in absentia, right, because he still lives in Dubai and there's no extradition treaty with Italy, Right, he gave back these two Van Goghs worth about 60 80 million dollars that Octave Durham has stolen, and he got two years right off of the sentence. He was sentenced to 18 years, and then it got dropped down to 16. And I think something else has happened, and that's been dropped. He ain't served a day, right, because he's in Dubai, right? Well, they arrested him last August, right, in Dubai on an extradition warrant, right? And recently, I've heard, right, that they turned it down, right? So I think he's been released. I'm not sure. He might still be in custody. That's Raphael Imperiali. Now, he runs this global fucking drug cartel, right, with Daniel Kinahan, right, who's, who's taken over from his father, Christy, right? Now, he used to run it for years, right? But he retired and went, oh, fucking have none of that. He said, I want a bit of something to eat and, you know, I want to have a bit of peace in my life. So Daniel, right, run with it, right, and turned it into a multi-billion dollar, with a B, not M, M right, drug empire, right? And then he's got into the boxing, right, right, to try and, um, you know, um, show that he's got a legitimate side, right? Well, apparently there's been rumours for ages, right, that the authorities are going to swoop on them all in Dubai, arrest them and dismantle their cartel, 
Well, waiting in the wings, right? Fucking hell, you know what I mean? The vultures, right? Unreal, isn't it, eh? Right, don't matter what walk of life, right? There's always vultures fucking waiting to swoop. You've got this little cartel, right, of Joey Sanson, right, his brother, Terry Sanson. You've got Darren Barker, Brian Groves, right, and a lot of other people who are distributors uh, in the UK, right? You've got Julian Ponder, drug smuggler, right? He's in Malaysia. You've got Mark Baker in Bali, right? And there's been talk and little fucking meetings, right? They got backing from Russian backers and fucking Chinese backers, right? Okay, um, right, if the Kinahan cartel falls, right, they're going to step into the fucking breach, right, they're going to step in and take over, right, now I don't know nothing about this, right, fucking international drug shit and all that, right, but this is just what gets told, right, this is what, you know, that, that they're planning to do, right, now I'm sure that the Kinahans know about fucking people like um, Julian Ponder and Mark Baker and all them people, right, Right, and I don't think there's any rivalry, but I mean, if one person stops, they get, you know, they get moved out of the way, and there's a void, right, someone's going to step into the breach, isn't they? So anyway, I hope you like that little story, right, um, about how things, you know, contacts from years ago, when you take the chance, and Mark Fishstein, oh, well, Mark Fishstein, right, when this case came up and he got it against Ellie, right, he said to me, he said, um, Turbo, he said, you're the best thing since sliced bread. Right, and funny enough, in a conversation, right, Mark Fishstein, the NYPD art cop, right, he was on the phone to Chris Marinello, you remember him, Chris Marshmello, right, the um, art, uh, the private art detective and lawyer in Venice, right, he's on the phone to Mark Fishstein, and Mark Fishstein says it, he says, yeah, he says, Turbo Paul, he said, he's the best thing since sliced bread, he said, I can't recommend him highly enough, right, and he left all comments on there, it's a privilege to be on your blog and all this game, right. So Mark Fishstein then retires, and he now works for K2, right? K2, like the Mountain, right? They're a big international security firm, right? He works for them as a big consultant on art and all this carry-on, right? Mark, right? Um, and, and so that's the story, right? We've got 36 minutes, right? We're up to nearly, right? So this is a good episode. Episode 17, right? The Art Hostage Podcast, Fireside Chats, episode 17, right? We're going to call this... Heli Narmed, right, the Narmed Gallery, right, Mark Fishstein, right, the International Gambling Ring, right, and money laundering with um, stolen art or with art, right, and not forgetting, right, Mark Baker, right, from Brighton. So I'll get back to you. This is today's one, right? Oh, and about this, right, I'm a bit late today, right? I'm, a, I'm only a little bit late, a few hours, right? I've had 11, right, contacts, 11 messages Where's today's episode? And I'm like, well, fuck me, I've got things to do. I can't believe it, right? So I think people might like this. Anyway, it's Art Hostage signing off, right? This is episode 17, right? Speak to you soon, right? Bye.